What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Illust Podcast, the number one podcast in the universe. You guys know these are statistics given to us by the president himself. Biden texted me and he gave me these info. Uh, number one podcast, student run podcast yeah. in the universe. These are these numbers were given to us by NATO. Yeah, and speaking of students, we have the dean of the students dean of students on our podcast today, Ross Novak. Thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome show. to the show. Um, I, I I honestly thought I was like, who's like someone like important and fun we could get? Because like over the summer, I got to talk to you and know you more through uh, orientation, and I'm like, oh, it'd be cool to get Ross on. So we got we we got to go find out. We got to ask him. And I want to ask you. You were, you were down right away. Was there like a reason to like you were just like, yeah, I'm down. I mean, it was your approach and the fact that you know NATO told me that the oh. statistics i mean oh, number yeah, one student course, podcast yeah. in the universe how could i say no to that no yeah because uh, there's a lot of uh, i know especially in different schools there'll be faculty that would be like i don't know especially the dean of students it, it, it would be hard to get like a professor on but like you're the dean of students you're one of the busiest people on this campus you're sending emails out to everyone when somebody has a question about housing we ask you and then you're just like right away you're like well, here's a solution, or you're like, hey, I don't deal with that, but here's someone that does deal with it, and you forward it. Like, how, how'd you, like, thanks for being, building the time to come here, because uh, we know you're really busy, but, like, how do you do it? <laughs> What's the question there? The time management oh, piece? Y- yeah, or? like, how do, you, how do you do it? How, how are you, like, so quick with it? How, how are you, like, help? How do you know so much? And, how, like, just everything. Well, I have a good team that I work with, including the staff of Student Engagement and Housing and Residence Life. So obviously without them, I really wouldn't be able to get much done. But, um, you know, I think, like, (laughs) the communication piece means a lot to me and being able to get back to people relatively quickly. Um, And I have a very short attention span, so if I don't do it right away, (laughs) then there's a good chance I'm not going to get it done. So I'd rather, like, respond well in the moment and give an okay. answer then wait and then maybe yeah. risk not getting back to somebody so you were on the ball of it i think yeah. if i were to sort sort my emails about who has sent me the most emails to my married address yeah i think you'd be towards the top there which is impressive in that way again yeah. time managing the time in that sort of way and do you have as a dean of students other than everything rubin has mentioned so far so um i work closely with housing and residence life uh with the office of student engagement i uh administer the university's conduct system and then i sort of see myself as like a student resource really Mm -hmm. i also work with a group on campus of other administrators and uh, folks on the student success side that if we're identifying that students might be having issues in whatever capacity we try and work with them and get them connected to the appropriate resources on campus to be able to succeed okay i heard you mention before the uh, housing you, are, you were before this, you were the director of housing, is that correct? Yeah, so I came to Marywood in 2012, and I came on at that time as a director of Housing and Residence Life. Mm-hmm. And then in 2017, there was some administrative changes, and they sort of shifted the makeup of, of the departments. At that point, I became the um, senior director of student conduct and housing and residence life. And then... Um, Actually, I think in 2017 is when I became the dean of students. I, yeah, yeah. So that was when they, they removed the role of the vice president assistant. Was it? Yeah. So at the time that I was hired, uh, Amy Patchy Woodruff, Doctor Patchy Woodruff, in the education department was the dean of students, and then um, the individual who was the vice president of student life had retired, um, and they changed the format, and uh, vice president Bolin Chase became um, student life and student success. And uh, at that time, uh, Dr. Patrick Woodruff became assistant vice president for student life, and then uh, Megan Cruciani became assistant vice president for student success. Um, and then Amy in 2017 um, went to the faculty side, and that's that's when I accepted the dean of students role. Wow. Oh, okay. And in the change of formats, did that lead to any issues uh, in in like the back back yeah. end of the college experience? Um. You mean the administrative changes and yeah, the yeah. staffing? Um, no, I respect uh, Dr. Ann Bull and Chase. Like she kind of stepped in and took on more of a leadership role with the student life side, which she hadn't been that familiar with, I think, before. But she really took the time to like get to know the offices, get to know the behind the scenes, and um, I, you know I appreciated that a great deal. Um, but 
I mean, I would think from a student facing perspective, I don't know that you would have noticed much of a difference. It was more the reporting kind of pieces, if that makes any sense. One thing I found out about you, because like I know everyone's like afraid of like, like whenever we see titles, like when you see the title of uh, like uh, the head of a department, you're just like, oh, this is a scary person. I'm not going to go to it. Uh, especially, I, I, I might, I mean, it might be true in a lot of other colleges where it's just like, oh, this is a person that if you want to get to, you got to go through the chain of commands. Whereas I feel like here at Marywood, it's very different. Everyone's super open. Like if you see them go up and have a conversation. Um, why do you think, as a dean of students, as someone who's up in the chain of command, why do you think that is over here at Mary? Why is it like so open compared to a lot of other universities? Um, I mean, I think it has to do with the core values of the institution, the respect, yeah. empowerment, service. Um, so I think even though there is like a chain of command, I think everybody is pretty open to like being open to talking with students or faculty and staff yeah. as issues come up and um, – trying to meet people where they're at. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's a very important thing here at Marywood is a sense of community that you all have. It's yeah. something we fall back on every episode. We talk to our, our, our faculty down here and everyone, and it's all so open in communication. And I think that's a, a very impressive thing as part of Marywood. And even, like, you coming down here, I just met you today. We were chatting it up before the podcast, and nice guy. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think that you're – such high up in the rankings because the, the, yeah. the stipulation I feel is yeah because it's like oh the person high up in the ranks is normally mean but like like over here in Marywood especially with like you Ross I like I found that it's like you're one of the most friendliest people on this campus and like e even with Sister Mary I saw her walk into an office and I'm like all right, it's now or never. So I like I ran in, I chased her down, and she was sitting in, uh, and I was like, hey Sister Mary, I have a question. Uh, we had, like I gave her the pitch, and then. Um, she was like, yeah, I'm down. And it's, it was just like the, the the friendly environment that the faculty here and, like, everyone that creates, um, like, here at Marywood is just so different. And I feel like it makes a much better experience for the students. So thank you guys for that. Yeah. Well, I think it makes a better experience for us, too, selfishly. I mean, having good relationships with students and being open, like, that just makes the job easier. Yeah. I mean, I I think sometimes because of the student conduct aspect there's that impression that like I might be a certain way or have a certain attitude, but I mean I I really value um, like building a good and positive relationship with students. I think that that's important because um, I really want to be there as a resource for students. And even if someone were to go through the conduct process, we try and make that like a pedagogical approach and make it educational. The idea would be to have students learn from the the situation and not yeah. to not necessarily punish people. Yeah, the idea, again, as you mentioned, is that I work, I work as campus safety, so sometimes we have to go through the process. And the entire time, all the RAs, and I'm sure you've taught them how to work and how to function, it's always very educational. It's never, we're here to crack down on you, to punish you, and you can't do this and that. There's there's rules, obviously, wherever you go, and the idea here is to teach you those rules and teach you the importance of following them, in a sense. Yeah. Um, and again, that's a group effort. That's uh, Michelle Bouton, the Assistant Dean of Students, Director of Housing and Residence Life, Erica Armstrong, um, Assistant Director of Housing and Residence Life, the four RDs, Waleska, Joe, um, John, and oh yeah, Sam, and uh, um, <laughs> student engagement, Sam. like Mike, yeah. Michael, uh, Collage, and, and Haley. So. Yeah. So you mentioned before how it makes your job easier in a selfish way. Can you dive a little bit deeper into what that means? Yeah. How 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 does maybe not having a relationship with the students, how does that how, – how is it harmful yeah. towards you? Um, well, I like to think I do have a good relationship with students. But I think if you don't have good relationships with students, it makes it harder for um, – the communication piece becomes difficult. People aren't open to coming to talk to you to share information about what they might be experiencing or the problems they're having. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes harder to kind of connect them with the resources. Um, you know, it's much easier to, like, help people if they're willing to come to you rather than feeling forced into something that maybe they yeah. have hesitation about. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a really yeah. good point. Honestly, I understand that. It's, it's always been the thing, you know, it's, it's sometimes, like, you have a hard time like open up to your parents because you feel like they're going to punish you in some sort of way. So you end up expanding outside of that. So it's good having a good relationship with people who you want to open up to because yeah, so they're comfortable coming to you if they have problems. And yeah, yeah. I mean, I know when I first met you, it was just like 
I accidentally threw stuff at you. I it was no accident. I, I mean, <laughs> oh. okay, okay, so, uh, so the story is I had a bunch of mints in my hoodie pocket. I was taking the hoodie off to sit down at Naz, our uh, dining hall. Uh, I'm sitting down. I put my food down. I take the hoodie off, and I fling it off. And all of the mints inside him just so happened to go in the general direction of where our Dino students were off. Novak was sitting. Uh, and that is how my first... In person conversation with Ross happened. I accidentally threw a bunch of mints at him, pelted with a shower of mints. <laughs> so maybe not the not the greatest introductions here. Not, not, not it's actually pretty funny. It's yeah. a good story. It is. Yeah, yes. it was it during is. accepted students' day, so all these students who had been accepted to Marywood who were thinking about maybe coming to Marywood or not are going around. They just see like this sophomore just like whip off his hoodie, <laughs> bunch of like mints just go flying onto Ross's head, oh, and it's man. just like. <laughs> what is this school <laughs> but like made a fun story and then after that a lot of the uh, conversation we had after that was just like you didn't throw any mints at me this time and i was like oh yeah i'm sorry i won't do it again but um during that i found out that you are a pokemon fan i am a fan of the pokemon yes so so how'd you get into that or yeah, let's talk. Let, let's talk about you and your yeah. Let's, we're done with work. Yeah. Done with work time. Okay? No, let's yeah, yeah. We, we wanted to be fun. <laughs> so, so you're asking me how I got yeah into so Pokemon. Having, yeah. So I, um, when Pokemon Go came out, like the idea seemed sort of intriguing that AR like technology in in the game format, and I was like, all right, this might be fun to play with my daughter. My oldest daughter had gone away for camp, so it was just the youngest one at home, and I thought it could be good like bonding time. So within like five hours, she was like done with it, and I got addicted. So <laughs> I'm uh, I'm still playing Pokemon Go, but then that got me into like the actual like series. Yeah. So then I got the uh, what the Game Boy. And uh, started oh. buying those, and oh. then the Switch, and started getting into those. Like I still have um, what, Legend of Arceus or whatever. I have that, Legend but I haven't. Versus, yeah. yeah, I haven't like finished that. So I'm probably going to hold off on Scarlet and Violet for a while. Yeah. But I, I'm hearing that there's a lot of glitches with the game. People it, seem unhappy. It, with it them. is. I was playing it uh, right before coming here. <laughs> That's why I lost track of time. It happens. Um, um, th- th- I mean, there's a couple of glitches with the game. It's uh, it's a little buggy, but it's also like Pokemon's first open world game, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I like that about yeah. the other ones. Go- going from like playing a, t- a like an eight bit game where it's like every like other section it goes to a black screen and then it loads into a new thing to a fully open world where you could go wherever you want with a level five starter. Like, my friend was like, let me see how far I could go without beating the first gym. And he, he made it to where, like, the second gym is. He got his ass whooped. But, like, like it's so cool to see how far the games have gone. So I, I feel like you will enjoy it. There's a couple of bugs where, like, if you if there's an NPC far away walking, they'll, like, lag a little. But as soon as you go closer, they'll, like, fix themselves. But it's a software patch. And it's pretty crazy to see how far it's. I've, I haven't played the open world ones. I played one yeah. of them on the Switch. I don't. I don't remember which one. It's been a while. But there's I Sword and Shield, Legends oh, of Arceus, yeah. and Scarlet and Violet on the yeah. Switch. I think I got. It was either one of the Sword or the Shield. I don't. Yeah, know Yeah, those are the main ones. And then um, they remade Diamond and Pearl. Oh, I, I got. They, yeah, yeah. they made the Let's Go games, which yeah. were. I, I feel like the Let's the Let's Go games are more targeted towards a younger audience. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, yeah. And it's because it's a very like gimmicky and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's very easy to play the game. Um, it's like you uh, flick the Joy-Con to go catch a Pokemon. Uh, so it's not not as yeah. Open it's not the mainstream. Aspect, That's yeah. what was the first Switch game, and everyone was like, "Yo, please don't tell me we're switching <laughs> to this." And they were like, yeah. "No, we're not switching to this. It's just a middle game while you wait for the next big game." I got you, yeah. Um, There's also the Rescue Team remakes. Ooh, oh, are they on the Switch? I think so. Huh. Oh, but I grew up playing Pokemon, so it always <clears throat> has a special place in my heart. And I, I remember when Pokemon Go came out; I think the craze of it, everyone playing all the time, kind of overshadowed. Yeah, how good it actually was, and especially as a way to like get out and get walking and get moving around. Uh, when I was in Scotland over there, I played it a ton, and it was just a way to go explore. And you know, like, yeah. I'd walk around and check things out, and then also kind of be having some fun on my phone. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. But um, would you say that there's a Pokemon game that's your favorite, and what would your reason for that be? Um. I don't know. I think the only thing I really have played consistently, honestly, is the Pokemon Go, which isn't <laughs> canon. But, like, yeah. I don't know that I have, like, a favorite, like, series game. Okay. 
what's your favorite Pokemon? Yeah, better question. I mean, there's so many to love. How can you choose just one? I, how about your starting six? What's your six? Give me a team. If you had a uh, your Pokemon team. <sighs> Man, I hate these questions. <laughs> I'm not tough. good at yeah, picking like a favorite of things. Like I can't do a favorite movie. I can't do a favorite song okay. or band. Like okay. I mean, like I th- everything has a purpose and a place and a time. So like yeah. maybe it fits for the mood or the the moment. But you know, I can't say it's my favorite. So not only is he not only are you the dean of students, but it seems like you have some PR training too. Is that what's happening here? <laughs> it's very diplomatic <laughs> oh, yeah, in your yeah, yeah, responses. Yeah. I have no favorites. It just comes with the territory. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> um. So Pokemon's one thing that you're interested in. What are some other like nerdy like things that, you, that 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 are your hobbies and you're interested in? So, um music, I don't play anything or like make my own, but I'm a fan of music and I've like I like to explore different genres and um <laughs> like as soon as I started like earning money and making paychecks a significant portion like through high school and college like ended up going back into music um still probably spend more money than i should and i like i still like physical media Mm -hmm. so like i have apple music subscription like i'm on spotify and all that but there's something just about like having the physical medium that i like yeah i usually end up sort of like (laughs) recording it to the to apple music but i don't know i like and i never really got into the um like records i never had a record player i had like my parents but uh i was more like came in at where the the cds were coming out okay so that would be my uh format of choice i think but um so yeah music would be one and uh for a while i got (laughs) weirdly really into fragrances um and i ended up that's like a rabbit hole that will like drain you of all finances yeah. like oh, when you imagine. get into some like exotic things you can spend five hundred dollars on like an ounce of a certain yeah. like fragrance wow. or scent like that gets That's, nuts but. yeah i'm well, going back to music for one second i know for a fact that you like guns and roses well, I don't know if you know where i'm going with this i one. think you're <laughs> going for a carpool karaoke experience yeah, so how did that end up happening they asked <laughs> they asked you said yes just like the podcast here uh yeah, so I feel a little <laughs> lost here. What's how, uh, uh, there was a carpool karaoke where some students picked him up and they sang some Guns N' Roses. <laughs> oh. And I will say I had the pleasure of watching the video on the way over here. And, yeah, not bad in there. Yeah, it wasn't my best work. <laughs> it's not okay, by it's any okay. means. You're under some pressure. It's fine. We get it. There's some yeah. studios here if you ever want to come and use them. <laughs> Thanks. Keep that in mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very well be out there. Um, but as you guys know, this... Uh, we're having a fun conversation. We're going to continue this conversation right after this little break. What's up? We're taking a little advertisement break to tell you about The Woodward. The Woodward is the on-campus publication for Merritt University. And I have to be careful to say publication. I always want to say newspaper, but they are entirely digital. Yeah, they used to be physical, but now they're all digital. They want to save the trees, save the turtles. Yeah, so now it's all online. It's on the woodward.org. Check us out. Uh, I'm, I'm part of the staff. I'm a photographer there. But it's mostly uh, writers that talk about Marywood events. But they also talk about things outside of Marywood. They talk about the community, the Scranton community as a, as, a, as a whole. Talk about pop culture. They give reviews and opinions on movies and TV shows and such. And the great thing is that it's run by the students. Yeah, it's like the writers are students. The editor-in-chief is a student herself. Yeah, Ellen Friends. She's yeah. great. And she has the final say on what goes on, uh, what goes out and published to the website. Yeah, but it's like an actual, like, we're like, in an actual company where you're working and you want to produce something, it has to be run by the editor-in-chief. And the amazing part is it's one of the students. There's a newsroom. We meet every week. We have a weekly budget. We talk about what stories we're going to be out. The photographers get a chance to talk about what kind of stories they want to do. Uh, there's there's good communication with the writers and photographers. If you want to be a part of it, you can contact Ellen France. Her email will be in the description. Or if you just want to read about it, thewoodword.org. Yeah. Thank you. Because you, because you were talking about, it, I, I was like, interesting. I was like, why aren't we rolling right now? Uh, but yeah, you were talking about. Um, I didn't know that you were a film student. Yeah, my uh, undergrad was at Ohio University, uh, telecommunications, um, video production with a minor in film. So you, you went to Ohio? Was that Ohio State? You're referencing? Nope. Or? Not the Ohio State University, but Ohio University in Athens, Ohio. Okay, interesting. Okay. Is that where you were born and raised, or how'd you end up there? How'd you end up here? So originally from the Dayton, Ohio area, went to college in Athens, Ohio at OU, did my undergrad, and then grad school there. 
um, worked at a school in Vermont for two and a half years after getting my master's degree, Norwich University. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's actually like a a, a military institution, Mm, which was sort of ironic because at the time, like, my hair was down to, like, here, and (laughs) I did not, like, look like I belonged there. But um, actually, it was an interesting experience and pretty positive, and I worked – I was an RD – so I was the coordinator for community service programs and a resident director in one of the civilian residence halls. They had just allowed civilians on campus like two years before I got there. Um, and it was a definitely a different dynamic, like living in sort of the primarily military environment and then with everyone adjusting to civilians being on the campus. Um, I left there in January of 1999 and went to Manhattanville College in Purchase, New York, and I was there until I came here in 2012. Interesting. And it was all kind of been in the administration side of higher education. Yep. Again, at Norwich, coordinator for community service programs and RD. When I started at um, Manhattanville College, I was the I came on as assistant director of residence life, then became associate, eventually became director. And by the time I left, I was the dean of first year experience and director of housing and residence life. That's interesting. It's weird you mentioned Manhattanville because I applied there. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh. Um, well, my school actually went on a tour. My high school went on a tour to Manhattanville, one of its locations. I believe it's two locations, right? Um, Purchase New York. Purchase. Ah, oh, dang it. Was it Manhattanville College? Yeah, that's what we went to. There's a castle then, on campus. Yeah, so no, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool. the one I'm thinking of. It was super dope. I'm like, this looks like Hogwarts. But uh, I was like, this is a super cool college. But, like, I won't be living on campus. I live, like, 20 minutes away from here or 30. Like, I'm like, I, I want to look for something, like, else. So, like... That's when I found Marywood. Well, it, it, it's kind of cool you, you went there. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was a small world. Yeah. I think before we get back into the fun side of things, I just have a question I need to ask now. So you had your undergraduate in film and production. You got your master's, and what was that in? So uh, college student personnel. Okay. When I was an undergrad, I was an RA. And, um, like, I think what I really liked about the communication program – so I honestly thought I was going to get into, like, music video production and, like, you know, I had big plans working with Nine Inch Nails and stuff, but mm-hmm. it never really sort of panned out. And um, I kind of found that my experience as an RA allowed me to kind of meet people and, ha- like, reach people in a way that I th- thought I could do, like, in the video thing, but found maybe – like it worked better for me in that context so i ended up well and honestly i think a relationship i was in at the time and not wanting to leave college played into it too but um went to grad school for college student personnel and then um you know went on from there i was gonna say the film and media side of things and then ending up being not not the opposite but being behind the education instead of out in the field um i thought that was an interesting jump you made there so are you are you satisfied with where you are now, or do you still have that passion to go out and film? And I know you, you said you like music, but not making yeah. it as much. So, where's so that passion come in? I think um, some of me wonders what would have happened if I would have stayed in it. Mm-hmm. But I think, like for what I kind of envisioned myself doing, there wasn't a lot of like consistency, and it would have been job to job to job. And I didn't feel like that I was into that hustle. So, like I, I th- think I went more the like <laughs> the opposite end and went sort of the study like job kind of thing but sometimes i wonder what would have happened yeah but the good thing about the creative world is that you can always pursue things on the side if you always wanted to yeah uh, it's a never-ending world it's always changing that's that's why i picked this field because i came into this uh university originally as undecided and i was like everything's the same like if you go for something like medical related like the science is the same yeah we're coming up with new things like to learn but it's like it's the same science uh, it's the same thing when you go into the engineering field. It's the same engineering with new technology. With the communications and entertainment, it's ever changing. Like we're changing like forms all the time. Maybe like people who are interested in other fields see that other fields are changing. But for me, it's just like for this field, we're changing from like oh, sitting in a big two TV studio to where like these interviews only happen on like Jimmy Kimmel or shows like that to us in the middle of the library well uh, in the library in a room of our own and just like recording everything uh, like on our cameras and everything where it's like so different from how it was when i was like 10 years ago when i was younger Mm -hmm. so it's like it's ever changing and that's what kind of got me to stay it's like there's something new to learn there's something new happening 
I like the DIY aspect of yeah. it. Like, you, if you have a good idea and like perseverance, you can make something work. Do you do you go to Three Jacks in Dunmore, the burger place? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. So I'm interested to see where this ties in. Well, yeah. there's a guy there named Rory who's like really passionate about filmmaking, oh, okay. and uh, he decided to do an independent project. And he actually had a, a Marywood alum uh, was starred in the like his short he'd won uh something with uh kevin smith the director and it's being shown at his um film festival or oh, like so wow, and he's rory's actually just held open auditions for his next film and stuff too so it's kind of cool to see like that's i guess what i'm talking about like someone who's like you know passionate has an idea and just driven to like make it happen no matter what like so and this is the best yeah. feel to do that i think you know you, yeah. anyone can kind of come with an idea and go do it and yeah. Like this is also one of those jobs where it's like for at least the way we're looking at it or like I have a part time job, but my job's over the moment I clock out. My job starts the moment I clock in or any time my manager goes, hey, could you work this shift? That's when I'm job mode. But it's like with with a feel like this, what I'm pursuing is something like this in the future. It's, it's a never ending thing. Like Jason and I will be like texting at like four, like not four a.m., but like two a.m. We'll be texting <laughs> sometimes four a.m. Um but it's like it's it's a 12 to 12 job this is you don't get into like there's different aspects of this field i feel like there's always like behind the scenes stuff like uh being a cameraman audio uh, engineer and all that stuff um i mean i'm just pointing those positions out because that's what i see in front of me right now but it's like those jobs start the moment they get here but like Traditionally, but like our team is different in terms of our team is fully in, uh, included in all of our steps. Uh, Jason and I have a lot of our uh, conversations going on separately as well, but then we bring everything to the team. Uh, but it's like it, it's a 12 to 12 job. It's like we're talking all the time about this, which is very different. You have to be really dedicated. Yeah, I feel like it's, in this. it's like hard to sleep sometimes too because you come up with an idea and you really want to write it down, or yeah. you're trying to th- figure out something in a specific way. and trying to go to sleep and I'm like, oh, yeah. I, just need, I need to figure out how this shot's supposed to look or how, what questions we're going to ask or how the conversation's going to go. Yeah. So it gets tough in that way too, but that's that's why it's not for the faint of heart, I think, and if you're dedicated. Honestly, student affairs isn't much different than that. Like, it's like, so I'm not really great at the work-life balance. You can ask my family about that. But, um, I mean, it's there's a lot of the elements to it, like a lot of people and, like, you know, you're concerned about like issues people are experiencing and going through and how best to like work with them and help them. Um, and just the daily administrative stuff, things that come up, how to solve problems and figure out how things work or don't work or how could work better. Um, you know, I know it, it doesn't seem like a apples to apples comparison, but yeah. I think there are parallels to what you're talking about with your, no, yeah, your okay, yeah. there's a lot you have to take out of work too. As you're thinking about it and yeah, the work to life balance, that's gotta be tough, especially with, as high of a position you're in it's yeah. you know a lot of work for every position as you work up as you move up it's not necessarily that you do less yeah. work you're doing more work now in a sense you and your team different kinds of work too yeah yeah oh that's uh, don't the work time we gotta talk no about yeah come on, come on. We're, 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 <laughs> like, we, we, um what so you said you were a film major in high school for your undergrad what drove you to that like what was, was it something like a movie you saw like and a lot of people they go you know i saw star wars growing up i want to be a director now or like some some was it a movie was it a tv show or like what got you to be like yo this is really fun i want to do this as like a career possibly so i think it was a combination thing i think it was like just loving music and being really right. into music and then also being into like like at the time like i was really into like david lynch movies Mm-hmm. Um, which would have been like Eraserhead and like Wild at Heart and uh, Blue Velvet kind of stuff mm-hmm. um, and sort of uh, getting stuff like caught up in the visuals there and seeing what they look like and experimenting with film and then putting that together with music that, that's, I was really interested in working in like music video kind of stuff at the time okay yeah, yeah cause like I, I don't know what you what drove you for, to like come here but like like I said, it was like it was something ever changing, and it's like I don't know. Ever since I was younger, I loved like acting, but like as well as like producing the whole thing, writing it, writing it down, editing it, and everything. There's just something about seeing the completed project at the end of it, all the hard hard work you put in, yeah. all the hours. Um, 
And then again, as I was talking to Ross before the podcast, like a, a way to creatively express yourself, it rains nighttime alarm as it always is, as a way to express yourself. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> the yeah, thing with that playing. alarm is like, I have no idea where it is on my phone. I've deleted all my alarms and I put them back on. This is the one alarm. I just don't know where it is. It, Every time we're shooting and it's a it's a PM shoot, it will go off at 5 p.m. I have no idea where the alarm is. I have no idea how to turn it off. So we call it Rubain's nighttime alarm. <laughs> Puts us all to sleep. <laughs> it just comes out of nowhere. But yeah, you were saying I lost my train of thought. But yeah, yeah, it's the creative process of it all and yeah. expressing yourself in, in a way where, and then again, coming start coming up with the idea, writing the script, writing the plot. If it's a film or this, we have like an outline, yeah. questions, and then. Filming it, producing it afterwards, editing it, uploading it. Yeah, seeing the final product when it comes out, like when this episode finally comes out sometime next month, it's going to be like... It's so satisfying. Oh, it's, yeah. That's what we recorded. It's, it's like whenever... Um, sometimes I don't watch our episodes over. I'll like skim through them uh, just to see if there's any like thing else. Because I'm like, I'm watching myself talk. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> but then, um, like earlier, my girlfriend was putting on one of the episodes... Uh, on her drive home and she was like uh could you check what episode i'm on because i was sitting in the passenger seat checking it and then okay episode five i put it on and i'm just like oh people are actually listening to it because i go look at like how many views we have and the interactions across social media and i'm like oh people are really enjoying this because like we're doing this because we find it fun it's part of our major but at the same time it's just like People are actually enjoying like what I, what we're putting out there, and it's it brings some sort of like satisfaction yeah. to a, kind of like a dopamine release in a way. Where it's like, so for you, would you ever go back and maybe use your what you learned in undergrad and maybe create a project of your own like this? I mean, I would never say no. I'd be open to doing something. Like I'm like, so I'm actually in the phd program at marywood as well um i'm in the dissertation stage and i like i've been as you may have noticed from the emails like trying to collect enough surveys to be able to like finish the dissertation piece um so i i finally working with my committee got enough to do like be considered a pilot study basically so i'm i'm should be done next semester but like (laughs) like through the the um phd school process and the dissertation process like part of me feels like well if i'm not going to be working on the dissertation then i can't really do anything like fun (laughs) like it's like i if i'm not doing that i should be doing work because then i it's like yeah i can't but so but again that work-life balance thing yeah it's tough what what are you what's your phd going to be in yeah so the PhD program at Marywood has changed like a number of times since I enrolled. So I'm still in um, what I enrolled in, which was uh, PhD in um, human development with an emphasis in higher education. Okay. So still just to further better yourself at the job yeah. you're doing now. Is that the plan? That's the hope. That's the hope. All right. Well, I'd say you're doing a pretty good job as it uh, is. Yeah. Not to say that there's never room for improvement, but yeah, I think yeah. you're doing great. And also it's like, because I had no idea. That you you were a communication student, so it's like it creates another sense of connection. Uh, I forget what we were talking about in one of my classes. Like, you create senses of connection through like things you have done with uh, uh, and other people have done. It's like I'm walking around New York City with like a Marywood hoodie, and somebody goes, "Oh, I went there." It's like it creates a connection. Where it's like so now it creates a connection of like, "Oh, you were a comm student. That's really dope." Um, but yeah, I, I feel like if we ever were to do like a short film in the future. Uh, which is something that I've been wanting to like, like do maybe like when the weather gets good again, uh, like a summer. Got a while for that one. <laughs> what? <laughs> got a while till that happens. So got a while to write and uh, and cast and stuff. Love to have you on the project. I would love to be part of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like, this is like kind of what we wanted the podcast to be when we started. Like, for students to come and get to know you. Like, I'm pretty sure not many people knew Pokemon Go. Uh, I, I know a lot of the RAs now. And like a couple of other people know, but like other than that, no one else knows. Um, it's not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> or even like a student at Marywood. I had no yeah. idea of that either. Yeah. So that's another way to connect with us as well. We're all I was, I was, I was, I was, I was like, is this the same Ross Novak or is it a different one? <laughs> but um, are, I, I think we talked about it in the summer, but like, did, did you ever watch anime? 
like I went through a phase where I did, but I never got into it like some some folks yeah. do. Like I can appreciate it as like an art form mm-hmm. and a thing of interest, but I was never my my thing. Oh. Mm. I, 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 no, I remember the conversation now because you were talking about Pokemon, and then I, and I asked about anime, and then it's just like, yeah, okay, he doesn't like anime. Uh, but any other video games that, because like obviously you're a gamer, you like Pokemon Go, you like other Pokemon games. What other games are there that you play, or maybe like Pokemon's the only one? I think that's the really the only thing I've ever like played consistently. Like I'm, <laughs> I think part of the appeal of Pokemon is it's like it's not hard. You know, yeah. like you can anybody can play it. Whereas, like when, um, oh gosh, when some of the like earlier games for um, like Nintendo or um, the first PlayStation came yeah. out, like it was very involved. I could never work the controllers for like Resident Evil. I couldn't yeah. like, uh, but I'd watch other people play. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you get home, you kind of want to have a nice, relaxing, yeah. de stress time. You don't want to get all worked up in a game. Y- yeah, because yeah. like. A lot of people are like, I'm going to go de-stress playing you know, Modern Warfare. You're not de-stressing playing Modern Warfare. You're stressing even more because, <laughs> like, you're screaming at people now. It's like guns, all this. But it's, it's Pokemon, man. You're walking around. You catch, <laughs> you catch your little pocket monsters. See, I also have a problem with, like, when I get into something or enjoy something, I can get, like, obsessed with it. Mm-hmm. And then I can spend way too much time and sometimes resources, like, focusing on that thing. So... Again, that's another reason, yeah. like, I can only afford to get addicted to, like, one game at a time. Fair <laughs> enough. I understand that feeling too much. All no. too well. <laughs> yeah. But I feel, I, I was watching uh, Joe Rogan's thing where it said, like, sometimes it's not, like, about, like, oh, is this a hobby of yours? Like, no, are you obsessed with it? Like, if you really want something, like, give it 100%. Uh, that's why I'm, like, getting a camera. I'm, like, changing, uh, adding a minor and all that stuff. Um, where it's, like, you, you got to get obsessed with it sometimes. Do, do you think it's a good thing for students to get obsessed with their projects and their hobbies and to make them into, like, possible professions? I mean, I think that, it, like, it depends on how you mean that and I think the person and the level of obsession. Like, mm-hmm. um, I think... I think that... There's a limit, particularly when you're in school, like you need to be able to focus on like multiple things and sort of juggle. Like if you can successfully like obsess to the point where, you you know, you're getting it done to the level you want, but you're also able to kind of handle the other things going on around you, then I think that's healthy. If you get focused to the point where you're letting these other things go or it starts to cause problems in other areas of your life, then I think you've got to rethink that and maybe examine where where your priorities are and maybe how you can help adjust the different forms of obsession yeah. in a sense yeah perfectionism or like a, a like a pure obsession could the, be the, the, too there's extreme a line between it but it's yeah. like a thin line i guess there has to be a balance in life yeah, yeah i think yeah. but no yeah it's it, it's weird because we're getting to know a lot more about you which is something i like um what do you think about this podcast now that you're being on here, I, I pitched you the idea. Now that you're on here, as the dean of students, seeing these students start start there, and I'm pretty sure over the course of the time you were here, or maybe other mm-hmm. universities as well, you've seen other students start maybe podcasts or a different type of formats like this. What do you think about this? And be honest. Yeah, we appreciate the honesty. No, yeah. So, like, I've not really been into like a lot of podcasts. So, if I'm being honest, I don't have like a extensive podcast background that I can make the comparison. Um, but, um, like, I was actually impressed when you sent me the link, and I kind of watched it, and I was like, "Wow, this actually looks like pretty professional. Visually, it's appealing. It yeah. sounds good. Like, you guys had a good chemistry together." So, I mean, I, I it was more than I anticipated. Okay. Um, you know, I wasn't sure what you were going to ask me when I came on, but I looked at it as a trust exercise. I was like, I yeah. trust Rupin. If he's asking me, <laughs> he's no, he's yeah. telling me not to worry that I'm not going to worry. You trust no, him with questions? Don't trust him with mints, though. Okay. Yes, oh, no, not yeah, the yeah, mints. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, this this podcast, we, we wanted to be where we could get faculty on uh, that people know around campus and um, just a video for them to watch to get to know you more. 
Um, like everyone knows your name. Not many people know your face because you haven't made that many public appearances. I'm um, better behind the scenes. <laughs> Nobody wants this. Oh, that's, no, that's, that's, that's not Come true. On. Like we have a fun time, like talking to you at any time. Like I run into you, Damien runs into you. Um, so like we w- wanted like it's the same reason we want to have uh, people like you and Sister Mary on here, where it's like it's people that are normally behind the scenes, but now it's there's a whole. 30 to 40 minute video out there where you get to know more about this person where you know like I never knew you were from Ohio you went to New York and now you're here in Scranton Pennsylvania um actually before we close up how did you end up in Scranton Pennsylvania from Marywood um I I knew that I was interested in pursuing like a PhD Mm -hmm. and ideally I was looking for some place that I could work that would have that opportunity so um the position opened up and uh I came down for the interview and like it felt like a good fit like so much so that like I had the conversation with my wife that like you know I think if we get a weekend we should just come down so you can see it and see what you think Mm -hmm. so we did that and um, luckily I got the job and here we are yeah we all are no yeah it's a one one thing one thing I learn every episode it's a small world it really is Yeah. yeah but thank you for coming on it was honestly a blast asking you questions and just like getting to know more about you because like yeah we've talked every now and then but it's like now jason get, knows more about you dan or like uh eric and like anyone that's watching they know more about the man that's like taking care of at least from my point of view like taking care of it all like wh- how we're coming back and how we're like settling in like i get at least like six seven emails from you a month about updates and things that like we need to know so it's kind of like nice to get to like sit down and have a conversation and get to know the man behind the scenes so thank you for taking time out of you dan coming well thank on. you both for inviting me yeah Thanks. i appreciate you being here and yeah participating in this trust exercise as you yeah. called it yeah I, I, since it I, I didn't really tell you much what we were asking <laughs> i was just like trust me just come on it'll, it'll, we'll, we'll try to have a fun conversation so yeah um once again guys comment section down below give this video a like uh thank say say thank you ross for coming on if you go to marywood here and uh i know there's a lot that ross does for all of us so give a little thank you in the comment section below but other than that thank you for tuning in to this episode of as we call it the number one podcast in the universe have a good one guys